being married for 38 years, raising three married children, and having five precious grandchildren, she's pulling this nonsense. I've worked hard to become debt-free and be just two years away from retirement. She claimed she was in Arizona for a mandatory educators conference, but I dropped her off at the airport, planning to pick her up on Thursday. A co-worker in Vegas for a PBR event sent me a photo of her in a casino with our family doctor. Now, it's Christmas, and all the kids are coming over. I was looking forward to hunting with my son and grandsons. I'm not sure if I should confront her now or act normal until after Christmas to avoid ruining it for the kids. Maybe picking her up and pretending everything is fine will give me a chance to gather more evidence. It's tough, but I don't want to devastate my children during this time of year. This woman sang a solo in church on Sunday and caught a flight on Monday to spend the week with the doctor. I've never suspected her of cheating in our 40-year relationship. I never have either. It seems like the secure life I thought I had is over. Thankfully, my parents aren't around to witness this. I might just catch a flight tomorrow and find them using different names. The frustrating part is both my brothers are gone and there's no one I can talk to about this. Maybe a pastor. Who knows, she might be involved with him too. Update. I took some time off work and am currently at my camp. My wife's sister picked her up from the airport on Thursday evening. I hired a lawyer and a PI recommended by the lawyer. I haven't talked to my wife about the Vegas pictures, and the only people who know are my lawyers and Reddit. My wife thinks I'm at the camp because a big buck I've been hunting for a couple of seasons is back on my plot cameras. We've had phone and text conversations, just casual. She doesn't suspect that I'm investigating her trip or life. We end every conversation with, I love you, as usual. I followed my lawyer's advice about our finances. The PI confirmed an affair between my wife and the doctor for over a year. We'll find out more details later. She didn't attend a conference in Arizona. She spent every night in Vegas. I plan to confront her when the PI completes his investigation. We believe they will meet. Since I'm out of town, I intend to give them ample opportunity to do so before I come home. I wasn't aware that most affairs occur in a demographic group of 55 to 70 years old. I thought we had a very good marriage. She seemed content with where we were in life, and I believe she loved me as I did her. I loved her completely. Everything seemed so surreal. Each day has brought things to light I never would have imagined. I guess at this point, I want to know how many years of my life have been a lie and why the life we had was not enough. Why was I not enough? Why were our children and grandchildren not enough? She is a beautiful woman. I always thought it was inside and out. I'm going to divorce her. There's no path to reconciliation. I'm not sure how scorched earth I will go. I'm very angry at both of them. I will confront the doctor and his wife together. I can't say today exactly what else I will do. I think I have to take it one step at a time, and the first step is to learn as much as I can before they have a chance to collaborate their stories. He may just be the latest in line. Update. I'll head home tonight. My 84-year-old mother-in-law has been a widow for 12 years and will be heartbroken by my wife's cheating. Tomorrow night, my wife's three married sisters, all in long-term marriages, are coming over for Christmas. Since my father-in-law passed away, I've been grilling steaks for them every Christmas. If I skip going home, it'll raise suspicions for my wife. I thought about faking the flu and staying put, but I've decided to go home. Missing this would affect the plan to return with my son and grandsons. I haven't confronted her yet. We've talked a bit, mostly through text. I'm sure she suspects nothing now. I've given the gate and house code to the PI. He, along with an IT guy, accessed her desktop while she was at work. Somehow, he's now getting her texts from iCloud. I don't fully understand how he pulled it off, but he did. I'm not in touch with the PI or lawyer daily. I don't know what he's found so far. I've got a meeting with him and my attorney next Friday morning, a week from tomorrow. It's tough for me to control my anger with what I know now. I think I'm spending unnecessarily on the PI, but my attorney wants me to keep gathering evidence until I confront her. I plan to get the info next week and hopefully stop paying him. I usually go to camp the week before and after Christmas. She won't suspect a thing. If I can hold off exploding when I get home, I'll leave again on Sunday. My son and grandsons are scheduled to hunt the week before Christmas, our yearly tradition. I haven't seen her in almost two weeks. I never imagined my love for her could turn into so much hatred and contempt. 
My plan is to wrap up the evidence I get next Friday after Christmas lunch. We'll open gifts with our children and grandchildren. I'll let her open hers last, ask her to show our children, take her phone, and leave. My next stop will be the doctor's house, where I'll deliver the evidence to his wife and family and then file for divorce on the grounds of infidelity. Update. I got back from the camp last Thursday evening, and she was home. I was worn out from lack of sleep so our conversation was brief. On Friday night we had a Christmas gathering at our place with her mother and three sisters. I managed to pull it off without her getting suspicious. I spent most of Saturday away, and after church on Sunday, I went back to my camp. My son and grandson joined me there on Sunday night. We hunted all week, and now I'm back home. We don't have any plans for tomorrow. Our kids and grandkids will go to church with us on Sunday and then come over here for Christmas lunch and gifts. I've surprised everyone by keeping my emotions in check, given the tough situation I'm facing. I've reconsidered how I'll reveal her affair. I won't confront her on Christmas. I've scheduled a meeting with my attorney on Tuesday morning. I plan to gather all the evidence he and the investigator have collected, along with the divorce papers he's prepared. I want to have my son and two daughters come to our house for a family meeting on Tuesday night to expose her affair and confront her. At this point, I'm not sure how I'll confront the doctor and his wife. My goal is to damage his reputation and career using any means available to me. Update. We got through Christmas with my kids, grandkids, and in-laws. On Monday morning, I talked to my pastor about the situation. He arranged a meeting between me and the affair partner's wife. We decided to confront our spouses on Monday night, making them write detailed letters about the affair. I made my wife write the letter and didn't let her explain anything to me. I told her I knew she was in Vegas and who she was with. I instructed her to include all details, and if there was any contradiction to the evidence I had, reconciliation was off the table. On Tuesday morning, I met with my attorney, got the collected evidence, and received advice. In the afternoon, I met with the affair partner's employer, demanding his termination. He got fired today. On Tuesday night, my children came, and their mother confessed to them. They're shocked and hurt. My wife went home with my daughter and is still there. I'm figuring out my next move. Reconciliation seems unlikely. I'll decide what to do with the affair partner once I'm clear about my own marriage. She admitted everything and answered every specific detail I asked for in her letter. Update. Did I question her why? Certainly, I asked why. She couldn't explain why. She told me and our kids that she felt like independent, aware she was ruining her life, but unable to stop. She told our children that they shouldn't have to endure disappointment or embarrassment due to their mother's immorality, expressing they didn't deserve the shame of a fancy woman. I won't share all she said because I'm unsure if any of it is true. How did she behave? She's completely shattered, remorseful, and pleading for forgiveness from me and the kids. She comprehends the gravity of her actions. How did my children react? One told her, and the other two agreed. It would have been easier to bury you than deal with this. Do I want to stay married? Yes, I do. That's why I never cheated on my wife. Have I met the affair partner's wife and told her? Yes, we've met twice and communicated by phone and text several times. Do I not care for his family by having him fired? I care more for the next patient's wife. He's inappropriate at 7 a.m. I'm considering divorcing her. I'm not sure. Have I sought therapy? Not at this time. What I need is for this to go away. If you know anyone who can make that happen, I'll do therapy. Every situation is unique in its elements, personalities, and complexities. I could handle it differently at a different time in my life. Every nuance I'm dealing with has been a great source of strength. One Redditor has been a valuable source of wisdom knowledge and encouragement. He has helped me more than I can express gratitude for. It's not like I got to spend quality time with my wife. She's not here. Why is she at my daughter's and not my in-laws? Her dad is dead and her mom is 84. I didn't want her mom to deal with this. She's at my baby daughter and her husband's home. They have no children yet, and the chance of her turning any of my children against me doesn't exist. This is especially true of this little spitfire, 10 years younger than her sister, and 12 years younger than her brother. She spent more hours in a deer stand, bay boat, and office truck with me than we could count. She won't let her say true things that are bad about me, let alone lies. Update. Weekend plans. 
I had a brother who was 14 years younger than me. He was a college professor living eight and a half hours away from our hometown. Unfortunately, he passed away in a motorcycle accident in 2017. He left behind a daughter, now 24, who is married and resides in a different state than her mother. However, she's brought her new baby home to visit her mother and in-laws. My sister-in-law hasn't remarried. I called my sister-in-law last night to find out when my niece was heading back home. Turns out, she's staying this week with her husband's parents, about 40 minutes from my sister-in-law. Since my children are smothering me, I've decided to go on a road trip. I'll be meeting my great-nephew, named after my brother and me. I'll arrive late tonight. I asked her to reserve a hotel room, but she insisted, saying, There's no way in hell that's happening. You'll stay here, and we'll watch movies and eat ice cream. I don't know when I'm coming back. I haven't spoken to or seen my wife since Tuesday night. I blocked her number. I called my son and informed him of my destination, asking him to go to the office and lease a rental property owned by my company. It's a renovated house intended for sale. I instructed him to let his mother know to collect what she needs from our house and move into the rental. She should pay rent to my son, who will then pay my company. I'm getting a new keypad installed on the gate and doors of my house on Wednesday, so she needs to get her stuff now. Update. Had a good weekend. When I called my sister-in-law, I let her know I'd be coming alone to see my niece and her new baby. She asked why my wife isn't coming, and I just said there are some issues, and I'll let you know when I get there. I got here around midnight, and she had just taken a hot pound cake out of the oven, the best thing I've eaten in weeks. I shared all the details of my saga with her. I teared up a few times, but as I went through it with her, I broke down and wept. She was very supportive and wept with me, stroking my bruised ego, and I guess I felt better after we talked. I went to bed around 3 o'clock yesterday morning. Yesterday morning she cooked bacon and eggs for breakfast, and as I ate told me that I may make the rules and run the show back home, but not at her house. She then proceeded to tell me my schedule. At 1 o'clock, I had a haircut appointment, overdue since this all happened, and then we were going to Dillard's to buy clothes to fit me. I've lost over 30 pounds in three weeks. After the haircut, we were going to a friend's house for a bonfire and fireworks last night. I was also going with her to church today, and she was visiting her parents this afternoon. She's cooking supper tonight, and her daughter and son-in-law are coming to eat and visit. Her son-in-law is taking me deer hunting tomorrow on an 8,000-acre timber co-lease he's part of. He's off all week, and if I want, I can stay and hunt all week. She will wash my clothes and feed me. We won't talk about my problems again until I leave to go home. So, I did what I was told to do. She went with me to her regular salon, and on the way there said, I'm going to use you to have some fun. When I introduce you, I'm going to give them your first and middle name. I asked her, what the hell? And she just laughed and said, just play along. I'm going to give these witches something to talk about. My middle name is my mother's maiden name. That's how she introduced me to her hairstylist. During my haircut, she asked where I was from and I said, Detroit. There's no way my accent will allow me to be from Detroit. My sister-in-law never missed a beat and said, he's a logger. Next stop, Dillard's. I haven't shopped for anything in years. Ended up buying three new pants, four shirts, two pairs of shoes, a tie, and believe it or not, a $75 tie and a heart-shaped Mark suit. According to her, it's the only suit my brother would wear. I didn't know he was so particular about his clothes, also bought a new belt. The suit had to be hemmed, and she convinced them to do it while we waited. On the way home she told me I'd be her date for the party in church, so I was. She told me to look at her like I looked at a new pistol so they would buy it. I went along with her except at the party. I was from Atlanta, sold road graders, and had been married and divorced four times. At church this morning we got there late and left early, because she doesn't want to be struck by lightning for lying in church. She sat right up under me, held my hand, and we walked out. I've had a good time looking like dumb and dumber with my 46-year-old sister-in-law. She has cut up the whole time and I have laughed, genuinely laughed. I haven't done that for three weeks. I'm going to hunt tomorrow and may stay until Wednesday, but I have to be at work Friday. I've talked to my son a couple of times. He thinks they need to try to get her some medical help. She evidently is not saying much and stays in her bedroom at my daughter's house most of the time. Her phone is dead and he and my other daughter communicate with her through my youngest. The affair partner's wife sent her a long text in which she called her everything but a child of God.
I haven't communicated with my wife. She asked where I was and told my daughter I would never be able to forgive her and she didn't blame me for not forgiving. My son said she looks like passing away. I still see no path to reconciliation. However, I am not going to file for divorce until I am completely sure. Some have said divorce and reconcile. If I change my mind, that seems like a waste of time, energy, and money. When I decide to divorce, it will be final. I also am not going to sue a fair partner if I don't divorce. If I do divorce, I will sue him to defray what the divorce settlement will be otherwise. I don't want his money. I have come to terms with the fact that this is not going to end soon and that my life will never be the same. Update. My wife is in the hospital. Yesterday morning, my daughter took her to the ER because she was dehydrated. Tests revealed that her kidney function wasn't normal, and she was showing signs of confusion, leading to her admission. They started her on a drip, and today they will conduct more labs. A psych evaluation has been ordered, and they anticipate her stay in the hospital to last most of the week. My son informed her sisters about her hospitalization, mentioning that I was out of town. As far as I know, her sisters and mother are unaware of her affair. I plan to sit down with her mother and oldest sister this weekend. In hindsight, I should have done this last Friday before leaving town. I'm still at my sister-in-law's house. I went hunting yesterday, but it is raining today, so I chose not to go out again this morning. Last night's dinner included fried steak, mashed potatoes and gravy, homemade biscuits, apple cobbler, and ice cream. This morning my sister-in-law has a few things to do but instructed me to be dressed and ready to go rambling when she returns. I suppose I'm glad to be here. I don't feel like talking to my friends just yet, and being at work isn't appealing. I have my laptop and phone, and an assistant co-worker who has been with me for 25 years, so business is being conducted as usual. He knows about the affair because he was the one who made me aware of the Vegas trip. Regarding her sister, I called her and provided a basic summary of the affair, and the circumstances leading to my wife's hospitalization. She was genuinely shocked, apologetic, and sympathetic. My mother-in-law is leaving tomorrow on a trip with three other widows she is friends with. My daughters, part of what they jokingly call the BHH gang, blue-haired ho, enjoy taking bus tours. She said she was not going to tell her about the affair or the psych evaluation, just that my wife's condition didn't seem serious enough for me to cut short my trips. She mentioned that I didn't seem myself and looked troubled when they left my house. The sisters are going to assist my daughters and daughter-in-law during the hospital stay, and one of them will take her home with them until she is able to move from our house. I called my youngest daughter and told her to go by the office and get a check. Go cash it, buy a card, and take it by her grandmother's house. I have a name stamp at the office she can sign the card with to put a note in it to enjoy her trip and that I loved her. Update. Regarding my wife's health, her kidney function has shown improvement. However, based on a psychiatric evaluation, she has experienced a psychotic break. She's disoriented, believing that we were in a car accident, and I am now deceased. She's distressed, thinking my funeral happened without her, and she's expressing her emotions in a way that's difficult to comprehend. Tonight, they transferred her to a hospital specialized in mental trauma expecting a full recovery in the coming days or weeks. However, she must have no contact with anyone for the next 10 days. My middle daughter will be the family contact for afternoon updates until she can have visitors. This situation is an unbelievable and unnecessary mess. I'm still at Sparky's place, and she arranged a 9.30 a.m. appointment with a psychiatrist she had seen for two years after my brother's tragic passing away. After a shower, when putting on my pajamas to go back downstairs, I realized that all my perfectly good white fruit of the loom boxer shorts were missing. They had been replaced by boxer briefs from Duluth Trading Company with a band that says, Go Buck Undressed. The colors include red, black, neon blue, maroon, and dark and light gray. When I questioned her about it, she humorously said the 60s called and wanted those ugly drawers back. She added that the boys need to breathe. Update. I got back home on Thursday night after seeing a psychologist my sister-in-law recommended, who she had used after my brother's passing away. The meeting didn't go well. To be fair to the counselor, I wasn't keen on going, and I was pretty angry at the time. 
discussing the details of my wife's affair, made me very uncomfortable. I had to attend a work meeting on Friday for a contract addendum that needed my presence and signature on a modified agreement. I met with my children in the afternoon to update them on their mother's condition. The clinician asked us to submit a plan for her discharge, and I stood firm that she couldn't return home but should move into a rental property. Today's status report showed encouraging progress over the weekend. They are also planning family sessions with her as early as the end of this week. I made it clear to my children that I wouldn't be attending any family sessions. I told them her recovery wasn't my responsibility and I wouldn't be part of it. While they may not fully agree, that's the stance I'm taking. However, I did commit to not filing for divorce in the next six months. I attended church on Sunday, sitting in our usual spot of nearly 40 years. None of the affair partner's family was there, and I didn't bother asking my pastor about them because I don't care. This afternoon, I met with a psychologist recommended by my pastor. It was a productive meeting for me. He's 74 years old, working part-time from an office behind his home. He outlined the goals he'd like to achieve with me, and I agreed to follow the steps. I feel comfortable with him and agreed to meet weekly. An investigator from the State Medical Board Examiner's Office is coming to my office on Wednesday morning. This follows a complaint filed by the attorney against the affair partner. I'll have to give a sworn deposition about the affair. I resent every step I have to take because of her affair. While I don't think she's faking a mental breakdown, I find it challenging to be sympathetic. Update. My wife is still undergoing treatment and is committed to staying there for 30 days. She's improving, but my children agree that she needs more in-house treatment. I haven't directly communicated with her since December 27th. To cover the costs, she withdrew from her retirement account. I haven't had a sit-down with my mother-in-law. She and her daughters have visited my wife. I texted her that I would talk when I felt ready. She has called to check on me multiple times. While she's sad, she remains strong. There's no news about the affair partner, but his house is up for sale. I'm unsure if they are separated or still together. I've attended counseling twice and am actually looking forward to my Monday meeting. It's been beneficial for me. The affair is widely known and being gossiped about. Despite being thoroughly embarrassed by her actions, I continue to attend church and hold my head up. My children and grandchildren are doing well. Keeping busy at work and managing my son's re-election campaign has helped me stay occupied. Lately I've noticed more attractive women than ever before. I'm not sure if it's good or bad, just something I've become more aware of. I believe that covers everything. Update. My wife left the hospital on Tuesday and headed to a rental property owned by my company. Despite being an older house, it has undergone a complete renovation from the stud walls. I still haven't spoken to her since December 27th. She penned two letters expressing remorse and seeking my forgiveness. I haven't replied, except for telling my children that I've read them and will reach out when I'm ready to discuss the past and the future. We have a woman who has been a housekeeper for my wife for over 20 years. I sent people to my house, and following my daughter and the housekeeper's guidance, they moved a bedroom suite and other essentials to create a comfortable space for my wife. They bought new furniture, and everything has been ready for her release from the hospital for over a week. She arranged to employ the housekeeper every day for as long as needed, providing her with a driver and sitter for the nights her sisters stay as long as required. I had dinner with my mother-in-law at her home on Tuesday night and explained my stance. She was very understanding and expressed her support for me. According to my son, his grandmother visited his mother last night and wasn't very sympathetic. Apparently, she didn't spare my wife's feelings with what she told her. This is the first time they discussed my wife's betrayal. I'm going to Sparky's tomorrow. She has tickets for a concert on Saturday night. Initially, she and a friend were going, but the friend can't make it due to a co-worker's funeral on Saturday. We'll fly to North Carolina tomorrow afternoon and return Sunday afternoon. I'm looking forward to something different, and hopefully I'll enjoy it. I'm actually enjoying counseling and look forward to the weekly sessions. It seems to help me compartmentalize the pieces of my life. 